playingguitar.org. I'm Wes Carr and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tuning. Now everyone knows there's nothing worse than trying to, or listening to someone play guitar that's out of tune. And it doesn't really take much. Just a little bit of a turn on a tuning peg can really destroy your chords. So, now there's a lot of different methods to tuning, but um, I mean you can use electronics or, or you can just have a good ear. Uh, either way, the, the most important thing is you have to have the, the right starting point. You have to know what your open strings are. So your top string here is an E, followed by an A, D, G, B, and E again. One good way to remember these, these uh, the order of the open strings is to use the saying, every American dog gets bit eventually, or Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Uh, I actually, when I was learning, I wrote E A D G V E on my left hand with Sharpie, so I would see it every day. Uh, I mean, really, whatever it takes for you to to kind of let those sink in, uh, it's it's very very important that you know what notes you're supposed to be tuning to. If you start tuning to the wrong notes, you're gonna have a bigger problem. Um, obviously. So, as far as as the the actual tuning goes, we rely on the tuning pegs up here on the headstock to make sure that our, our open strings are the notes that they need to be. So on the, the top side, if I move the peg toward the left, I'm going to raise the pitch. If I move it back to the right, it's going to go back into, or it's going to lower the pitch. Now on the bottom of the headstock, that's actually backwards. So if I move the uh, one of the bottom headstocks to the left, it lowers the note. And if I move it to the right, it'll raise it again. So as far as the actual tuning goes, there's a few different ways you can approach it. You can try to pitch match off of one string. Generally, people will use the, the E string down in the bottom here. And if you play the 5th fret of the B string, those notes should match. If you play the ninth fret of the G string, those notes should match. If you play the 2nd fret of the D string, those notes should match. It will be an octave down. If you play the 7th fret of the A string, again those notes should match, will be an octave down. And if you play the open E string, obviously, those notes should match with two octaves down. And some people will play up on the 12th fret to try to get it closer and have it be an octave away. The other thing you can do is to match, the, uh, match your string to the string next to it. So if I play the 5th fret of the E string and the open uh, A string, those notes should match. If I play the 5th fret of the A string and the open D string, those notes should match. Fifth fret on the D and open G should match. Fourth fret of the G and open B should match. That's the only exception, or the only change in the pattern. And fifth fret of the B and open E should match. The other way that you can approach this is to use harmonics. Some people's ears can't pick up low, uh, notes that low and then they struggle to, so a harmonic will actually raise the pitch and help you hear it better. So if you take your pointer finger and just lightly touch the metal over the 5th fret of the E string, you'll get this nice little ring. And then if you play the 7th fret of the A string, in the same way, a harmonic, you should have the same note. And you can follow that pattern for the next set, and the next set after that. But once again, when you get to the G and B, you're going to have to go back to playing the 4th fret and the open string. And then you can go back after that. Now if you have a note out of tune, let's say I've now brought this A out of tune, 
and those clearly have the same note. One of the easiest things, easiest way to, to tell if it's high or, or sharp or flat is basically to sing the notes that you hear. Now if you sing those two notes, you can hear that the second note drops down. And so we need to raise that back up. Until it matches the, the note before. Another really handy tool to use, or, or a really important tool that can be used, is just a normal chromatic tuner. Normally you can pick these up uh, for around 20 bucks. And if you turn it on, it'll actually tell you the note. And it'll have a little line. What you want is that the line to basically be dead center. If it's to the left, that means the note is flat. If it's to the right, it means it's sharp. And if it's flat, you need to raise it. If it's sharp, you need to lower it. Remember that the, the, the notes in a scale will basically follow the order that they appear in the alphabet. So let's say the guitar is so out of tune that this note's a D instead of an E. Now if the D comes before the E in the alphabet, in the, or if it, and if it comes before the E in the scale, that means it's too flat, it's lower than the E. So we want to basically raise the pitch until, that, until the tuner says E. Now another nice little benefit that technology has given us is uh, oftentimes if you have a tablet or a smartphone, you can download uh, a tuner app and oftentimes they're free and they're actually pretty accurate. The, the, real, the real issue comes in if you have any other noise around you, the, the tuner can have trouble picking you up uh, because it's using the actual microphone to, to tell your pitch. So if, if you're in a, a noisy environment, they can kind of be less accurate. Whereas an a actual clip-on tuner will tune your guitar based off the vibrations of the headstock. Which does, so in that case, it doesn't matter how noisy the environment really is. Uh, but I mean, they're still useful tools, uh, and, and a good and a good place to, to at least get get started practicing tuning your own guitar. Well, I know that'll go well, and hopefully that'll resolve some tone issues you may have been having. Good luck and happy picking.